Welcome to Licking Non-Vanilla, a sex-positive hour of talk about kink, sexual mores, and writing dirty words. So grab a cup of cocoa, your favorite easy chair, and the lube as we go sailing into the dark, sweet waters of all things naughty. On Licking Non-Vanilla, with your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr. and M. Christian. There's those Thunderbird numbers again, Chris. It's just I, I hard to, it's hard to describe to people because they they can't see what we're seeing because we when we record the licking on vanilla, which is where you actually come to, uh, we record it so on an interface where Chris and I and the guests, if they want to, we could all see each other. We don't record the video because uh, we're too stunningly handsome for you to handle. <laughs> um, but um, so what happens is we have a countdown clock that comes on before we start recording and it's six, five, four, and it's big numbers that are very reminiscent of the countdown of Thunderbirds, which is a, a show, a cr- crazy marionette show actually from mm-hmm. from the uk um uh, back in the 60s but anyway let me say let me tell you who we are <laughs> uh, my name is ralph greco jr and across from the aisle from me is it's chris otherwise known as m christian and you have reached licking non-vanilla and as usual we're going to get into some stuff some naughty stuff if we can we have a guest coming on today um this guy jay who's um how do you say his last name chris do you know you know i'm not, i'm no i'm horrible at pronouncing last names but i'm no, i don't know at, we'll, we'll have to ask we'll, him we'll find out we'll exactly find out. we'll, we'll have to, to ask him <laughs> he's coming on in about a half an hour or so um and he's a fetish artist which mm-hmm. is pretty cool stuff he's a that's a lot of it looks like line drawing illustration to me and then with with um but it's cool. He does not only does he do um, illustration of figures, he also does um, illustration of, of fetish gear. Uh huh. Right? Which oh, is he's excellent. Cool. I was seeing, yeah. He's totally excellent. Yeah, he's a, I he's mean, a, we'll definitely include um, when, when we do the write up, of course, because you're so wonderful about doing that. We'll have um, a whole listing of like, you know, his artwork and such and where to find yeah. it and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it really is. He's really quite excellent. I have to say that he's a great guy, too. Yeah, you know him, right? You didn't you hang out with him in L.A. or something? Yesterday? Yeah, I went. This is a quite a while ago. I'm sure he'll probably you know tell us when that was because I have no right. no I don't do dates very well. But we had a great time. Right. We went down there and we we hang out and just did a little, the L.A. experience. It was a lot of fun. So what you know back in the day, Chris? What what did you find the difference between the L.A. kink experience and you know um, the sex kind of experience and the and the San Francisco experience? So two the two of the cities that I think first. California comes to California, the two that I think of most, but I'm sure there was others. But what, what, what was the, if you had to like, you know, uh, delineate any specifics between them, what would you say there was? Well, first, I'm going to duck the question. I'm going to put you on the hot seat because you've been okay. so great about, you know, asking me all kinds of questions. But I want to okay. point people to your wonderful YouTube channel where you've been posting some of your music, which is absolutely wonderful. Thank and you. it's so Thank funny. You, I've heard friend. you perform once or twice, but I just really want to call it out because you're a fantastic musician, Ralphie. And look at him. I look really at him. can't well, wait for you to have do a, some I have more an, stuff. I'm, <laughs> I have an amazing producer, engineer, who happens to be uh, the producer of the show. Now. And, uh, and you'll hear you'll hear what it's good because it's usually just me in the studio uh, playing with myself, which is, you know, what's what's new there. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but with a good thing. But but when my buddy um, helping me out there more than helping, um, it's you know, I, I get to bounce ideas off of somebody. So on that respect and but thank you for calling that out of course but and i tell you tell it's like me. you know i always love discovering all these new things about yourself i mean you're a one at uh, a playwright you've done comic book work i mean all this kind of cool mm-hmm. stuff and well, one of these too, days Chris, i'm gonna see one of your stuff sorry you've done a ton of stuff too i mean that's the I thing we know. should impress upon people well let's say you know we should impress upon people not only are we incredibly wonderful and handsome um there's a lot of creative people and and that's a hard term to determine. What 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 create what determines somebody to be creative? You could be creative in doing anything, right? Mm-hmm. But the, a lot of people do a lot of different stuff that they oh, yes. that they have a passion for, right? Yeah. So most of the people I know who are into music or art or you know literature or whatever they they usually do more than one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they do a, a wide variety of stuff, and uh, and I think it's it's it, you know in this country. I was reading it somewhere once that when you get popular in one field, it's very hard to get popular in another. 
It's very uh-huh. hard for somebody to take you seriously in another field because you become when you get, here when you become popular, you get you get a rush of popularity when you mm-hmm. get very very big. So it's hard for other people to say, oh, "Wait a minute, yeah, I never know he played guitar. Or I never knew she did that." You know, um, but we do we do multiple things, which which there's plenty of people I know do more than one thing. But let's go back to the sex question. Sure. Uh, um, what, what did speaking about multiple things you like to do? What was the difference <laughs> you found in in L.A. and in and in San Francisco if there was a difference? You know, I got to dodge the question because I didn't really do much in regards to the sex scene in L- in L.A. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, mostly I was the Bay Area. And okay, a couple of right. times when I was married, we would travel and we'd sometimes investigate what was going on, like uh, New York, um, okay. Seattle, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really hard to say. Um, I do know that um, it's definitely very active. And, but I think, the, you know, maybe it's, be- I don't know, it's really hard to say why, but the Bay Area seems to have a longer tradition of it. Um, I think also oh, it's just I'm, because I'm, of size. I mean, sure. the L.A. area is so massive. The joke when you're right. living in L.A. is everything is 45 minutes away. So the corner right. store, 45 right. minutes. Everything is 45 minutes right. away. Um, right. So it's such right. a huge area that it's, you know, versus the Bay Area, which even though it's pretty dense and everything is still 45 minutes away, it's a very small area. So I think it's yeah. kind of like magnifies that to a certain extent. But I don't think I've actually ever been to anything down there. I've, I've talked to you people who have. I know there's many yeah. professional dungeons and there's a you know, a very active, you know, swinger scene and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Of course, a lot of this stuff's on hold now because of the pandemic, but, right, um, of course, but sure. yeah, it's, it definitely has a different flavor. Um, when I was living there, I, I always kind of felt that, you know, the Bay, the, the Los Angeles area has this kind of, well, again, you know, kind of a flavor to it. It's really hard to explain. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it always reminds me of like, you know, uh, Raymond Chandler or Philip K. Dick or, you know something it's 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 mm-hmm. very unique i mean i do think that areas have their own particular oh know, absolutely the way they, they feel yeah, I mean, yeah I, mean, I would say you know uh, from what i've experienced in well um we said this both uh, we've said this before las vegas is a hard one to define because there's so much going on there mm-hmm. of this kind you know even even if it's not directly about kink or sex it's got some sort of the patina if you could say that of, of that kind of stuff on it. Um, but San Francisco is a definite, definite different city than New York as far as the kink scene goes mm-hmm. and from what I've experienced. And then we, were, we both, we both experienced St. Louis, which was a different kind of feel in different kind of people there. I had a little bit of experience in uh, Ann Arbor. I was seeing, seeing a, someone who lived in Ann Arbor and she was, you know, slightly into the scene. It was just more partying and getting to know people. But that scene was different too. That was a, that's a Midwest scene, and Midwest scene, as the Midwest states, they're different than coast states. You know, um, mm-hmm. and the East Coast is different than the West Coast. And I'm not, I'm not saying better. I'm just saying different. So I think, and it, and then you go over to Europe, and it's a whole different thing too, right? I mean, you have Berlin, Absolutely. which is supposedly one of the biggest cities, and then London. Oh yes, and which, especially you know, yeah. Berlin. Um, yeah, Amsterdam, Berlin, Paris, you know, right. all these places have a very active scene, but Berlin particularly, I didn't take right. advantage of it when I toured there, but at the same time, it was like, I've heard about it. I've heard it's like, it's really like a sex city <laughs> in many ways. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny. You think, and, and talk about traditions that go way back. I mean, they, they go further back than we do here. Um, I know, I know I hung out with some people in England it was some some friend of a friend's sixtieth that we went over. It's a while ago, and this guy was into w- what what considered the English vice, which is caning over there. Mm-hmm. Very very big in on that whole spanking and caning scene. That's a real big scene over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean bondage too, of course, and everything. But I seen that seemed to be really big. Even when when you look at. Um, when you do some research and you're looking at mistresses where they're all over the place and they seem to be a preponderance of, of that kind of thing going on with the mistresses in the UK, a lot of caning and that kind of work, you know, which is, you know, goes back in their history, way back to their English school days kind of thing, you know, exactly. six of the best and all that. Right. Yeah. So it's interesting how, how these, these places, they get almost a reputation of what they're known for, you mm-hmm. know, but we have, haven't, unfortunately we have never, haven't been invited yet to a, a kink convention in Europe. Oh, our fingers are crossed. I mean, we got that. We yeah. got close with that yeah. Hungarian thing, which would have been wonderful. But that was close. Yeah, we did get close. close. We were going to go to Hungary. Yep. Um, and uh, and that was like a real. Uh, what happens with Chris and I is we. And uh, again, this is all post. This is all pre 
uh, COVID. So, you know, I don't know. We don't really know what's going to happen now. Um, but before when we, we would try, we would try to get some gigs and we, we, we'd get on a website and they'd want our credentials. And we did have something happening in Hungary. It looked like it was going to happen, but then the whole thing kind of just fell apart. I get the guy felt did what happened? The funding fell apart. What happened? I can't remember. I, I know that, you know, it's, it's so sweet that they would even bring us in, but again, it's two of us. So it's twice the expense of everything. Yeah. And which is already, right. you know, not cheap to get to Hungary. So it's right. the two of us, which right. is, you know, that I think it's sweet they even considered us. But yeah, that would have been right. fun because I've always wanted to go, you know, to that part of the world. When I was living in Europe, I unfortunately the 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 wall was still up, so I couldn't, you know, oh, you yes. know, really kind of you swing that. Limited. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd love to do that someday because you know that's a whole different world right there, a whole different scene. Yeah, I, and and the problem with with like chris said we we're like a double act so it's 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 you get two people for the price you know but you don't get them for the price of one there's you just, there's there's expenses to incur and then of course chris has a massive four page writer he won't go anywhere unless all these <laughs> these uh these specific uh criteria are met and it's that's very right. hard to get the midgets that's first mm-hmm. of all really hard and and keep the chocolate sauce as warm as you yeah, as you want it to be mm-hmm. um you know chris has these really wild demands and oh uh, yeah so that makes it very difficult so oh between the green m and m's and the um and the liquor green m and m's is mean. another thing yeah the green, uh <laughs> you know it's just it's just a whole uh nightmare with with so it's hard to get us over there but and it was another one that was going to happen on the East Coast. You came out, and uh, that yep. fell apart. So, you yep. know what happens with King conventions? They, they're they like anything else, any other convention. Um, they can fall apart if the funding isn't there, and, and you don't get enough people to come, and, you know, you get a little – and you, like, for instance, I saw Chris in New Jersey once – um, a guest fell out of, out of out of um out of um some sort of a, an event. Some guy couldn't do it, and they called Chris at the last moment and shot him out. Remember that one? Oh yes, yes, yes. That was yeah. fun. But yeah, that happens sometimes, and sometimes it's it works both pro and con. Where you yeah, think, oh, right. it's like this is all going to happen, then suddenly, boink, it doesn't, which happens more right. times than we care to think about. And right. the other times it's like, hey, we got a window and it's always nice to be invited. But, you know, hey, this yeah. other person felt, you know, fell out. So we're going to pick a you. <laughs> so, hey, I'm yeah. The, yeah. And I'm I, the runners up. You know, <laughs> that, you know like, I, as musicians know that, too, sometimes it's just showing up. You know, sometimes yep. it's a matter of like, well, this guy couldn't do the gig. So we called you and like you feel bad for the guy who couldn't do the gig. But at the same time, sometimes you fall into the gig that way. And mm-hmm. that, that is I mean, plenty of. You know, people who are well known have fallen into gigs. I never thought I would get that, but they called me because so and so couldn't make it. You know, and that's what happens. So we're lucky enough at this point. Although, again, we're talking about what's going to happen. Excuse me, post COVID, we don't know, but we are lucky at this point that people know us a little bit. So sometimes people do re- reach out, like with Chris specifically, they will. They they'll reach out and say, "Look, can you do this gig?" You know, um, kind of last minute, whether it's a science fiction gig convention or whatever but um and it would seem you know we said this before chris you you've always said this like conventions especially sci-fi conventions could be could really be online they really oh yes be. oh yes absolutely yeah. and that's um that's interesting too because you know the one thing that the pandemic has done is push a lot of things virtually um in yeah. fact i'm i'm supposed to do a presentation for reader con which is um this East Coast long-standing, uh, it's basically kind of like fantasy and science fiction convention, and they've asked me a couple of times, but I just couldn't afford to come out there because you know paying mm-hmm. for the hotel and the airfare it's a little expensive. Yeah, right. You got and you have to cross the country. For exactly. Coast, yeah. Exactly. So it's a little bit more expensive, and, and I've always wanted to go, but they you know never could swing mm-hmm. it. And this this time they're actually doing a virtual one, so I get to participate, which is cool. Right. But yeah, a lot of places are now kind of like embracing the idea of going either a hybrid or nothing but virtual, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you can you can do a lot more content. You don't have to pay for hotels, so there's a better profit mm-hmm. margin for the organizers. Um, the only problem mm-hmm. is, of course, you have to have the technology to take advantage of it. So if you have a you know old computer, that's going to be a problem. But I still think right, it's kind of right. cool because you know, especially for conventions that deal with things like science fiction, it's like, hey, we're living in the future. Might as well take advantage of it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny because I, well, you know, both Chris and I have been on the uh, Dr. Lori Beth Bisbee's show. Mm-hmm. She does reads our stories, or we read our stories on her show. She's a wonderful person, and I look up Dr. Lori if you get a chance. But we, when I was on her show last, we were talking about what you just talked about about a hybrid situation, um, and that works. The only time that doesn't work is 
for, you know, the things you want to do in person. And we have been to conventions where, you know, some of the fun of that convention is people getting together in person, you know, to spank each other or, you know, or to, to whatever it happens to be. So that aspect is, you know, you just won't be able to do that. So that may be why the hybrid comes into play. Um, and, and whether it's good or bad, how it, and uh, this is, I just did something for, for the, for the children's book yesterday w- w- at a classroom situation. Oh, and the cool. teacher said, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen. We just don't know. I mean, everybody's going back in September full time, mm-hmm. but as far as what, what the new paradigm, if there's going to be one, nobody knows, nobody, it's completely off the board. Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody knows. And you know, with the CDC seems to, they, they move the goalposts every day. You don't know what's going on because they don't know what's going on. And in all fairness, nobody knows. This is the first time we've come across something like this. So, uh, Oh, then you have certain states are better than others. I mean, you know, some, yeah, yeah. some are more organized and some actually are, you know, working with people to minimize that other ones are putting their head yeah. in the sand. So it's, it's really right. very up in the air. I do know there's been some yeah. blowback, which is a way, interesting way of saying it, considering what we talk about on the show, um, mm-hmm. where uh, some corporations are saying, oh, we expect, you know, our employees to, you know, put their butts back on their seats when the pandemic's over. And a lot of people yeah, are yeah. protesting that because, frankly, a lot of jobs you have, there's no reason to be in the office, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, why even, you know, have people return to the office environment when, you know, it's not necessary? Yeah, it's a weird thing because I was away about a month, couple months ago and I, I went to this deli in a seaside town. And so regularly it's in Jersey, so it's not so busy yet, you know, mm-hmm. pre uh, Memorial Day. And um, and I called the guy on the phone and he had he said he, he delivered. He said, oh, deliver, that's cool. And he said, no, I, I can't get it. He goes, I can't deliver because I, I can't get out of here. You know, I'm, I'm the only guy here. So when when I went to pick the thing up, I just started joining with the guy because he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. And I just started bullshitting a little bit. And uh, he said, he said, you know, he said, I fear the summer. He said, because because now that everybody's a lot of people are, are collecting, he said, nobody's coming to work. Nobody would come to work at a deli because they're not making, you know, we're going to make it a deli, whatever. Mm-hmm. He said, but I can't get anybody to work because everybody wants us to stay home because they're like, why bother? Because mm-hmm. we're making the money. So, like, it seems to me, and it's as true of every instance I've ever encountered in my life, there is, there's, like I said, blowback, and there's good and bad, and there's negative and positive in every single aspect. And I think when, when we try to ignore that and say, oh, no, it's all wonderful. So you can't. It's never going to be all wonderful. You know, it's you're going to ha- and you're going to have to surf both of those things and try mm-hmm. to get around it, you know, and also get along with each other. If we're not seeing things the same way, mm-hmm. you know, which is hard for people to do, man, they're having a hard time with that, too. Absolutely. I think the, I think one of the biggest things we need to get over is the fact that things are that, you know, holding on to the idea when things get back to normal, because there's a very good chance that things will never be the same. Uh, for a lot right. of reasons. One, people are getting used to working from home. Again, telecommuting will become mm-hmm. more common. And two, it's like, you know, a lot of industries sort of already were on the way out and the pandemic just pushed them over the edge. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So things Plus like progress, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like theaters are a good example. I mean, you know, I'm, I guess everyone's a lot of people are going to miss going to the movies or something similar. But at the same time, it didn't make a lot of sense, especially when you weren't have streaming services. And yeah, this just yeah. sort of pushed that industry to sort of, you know, realize that it was already kind of like, you know, a little wobbly to begin with. But, right, yeah, it's right. like I think it's important to sort of realize it's like, you know, don't think that, you know, because if you think, oh, God, I can't wait till things get back to normal. It's just gonna be frustrating when they don't. It's better to sort of like roll right. with it and say that, you know, the world is going to be different from now on. And Which there's still a anyway, chance. Right? Of, was that? No, I was just, I was just, you know, I just say that I was just thinking one thing, which was, it's always changing anyway, right? No matter exactly. what we, where we are, what we're doing, each day is different than the last day. So, exactly. you know, but you're saying it's, it, it, I'm, I'm very resistant to change. I, I just, that's just my nature. Um, that's why, that's why I usually carry around dollar bills, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, I have a hard time with it. I mean, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I have a hard time with it, but actually, but there is something be, you can't stop progress. Mm-hmm. And if people don't want to go to the movies to see, and you know, people like you were saying, people were not going to movies before, right? They were because they didn't want to deal with people on, on their cell phones mm-hmm. and try to find a car to mm-hmm. park the car, and how astronomical the prices were. You know, oh yes, so, you know. But what? Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, and I hate that. No, 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 not at all, yeah. not at all, not at all. But, but I agree with you. I think that. Just, yeah, you said it exactly. Yeah. It's just like you know that you know we need to realize that things are not going to go back to normal, and frankly. 
Right. There's a lot of things that needed to change, and this is a good impetus that they have to change. Yeah. And other right. things, yes, we're going to miss them because they're not going to come back. But that's you know kind of like again the nature of the world. It's never always going to be yeah. fixed. Um, right. And again, it's like I think in some ways we, we've learned a lot from this, like telecommuting again and this kind of thing. Yeah. And right. you know, I for one, you know, because like yourself, I work from home anyway, so this hasn't been a huge right. change. Though so the social isolation has started started to prey on my. That's the tough. You yeah, know, that was hard. Yeah, yeah that's the hard because part you, because you know it's like yeah. it's one thing to it's one thing to not want to go out, and another thing that you can't go out. Oh yeah, no, that's that's what it, yeah, it's difficult. Now. We're going to talk to somebody in a couple minutes here. Uh, first of all, let me tell you what, where you're at. You're at Licking Non Vanilla with me, your one of your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr. and then M Christians over there. How do you? And he's, he's the other. He's the other host. <laughs> um, we're, so we're going to talk to Jay. And we're going to find out how to say his last name. Um, and he's a <laughs> fetish artist. Um, and we're going to get him on in a couple minutes here. We we, we just been joining a bit. As usual, Chris and I start going off. We just <laughs> kind of go off a little bit. But I'm, I'm interested in talking to Jay about how he does what he does and wh- how you know why he does it. And th- what you were just talking about, he does it, I'm assuming, um, by himself. You know, how we, we work our work. We do our work by ourselves. So um, I think we're going to, you know, we'll get him on here in a couple of seconds. And uh, we're just going to, we'll shoot him an email and see if he's around and stuff. But uh I've been looking at his stuff. I got, I contacted him and then I interviewed him for uh, sex files. And then, uh, and then when Chris and I were talking, Chris said, wait a minute, I know this guy. I met this guy because as we know, the, the, this world that we write in, the, the erotica world is extremely small. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, the kink world too is actually pretty small, but the erotica world is very small. Even if there's somebody's an ar- erotica artist, we, there's, it's a very small world, isn't it, Chris? Absolutely. It's like, it's kind of the old joke of six degrees of separation, you know, yeah. in, in the kink scene, it's like two. I mean, you know, everybody yeah, knows yeah. everybody else. And the same thing for the erotica world. It's everybody knows yeah. everybody else, just, you know, to some degree or other. And, you know, cause it's a very, there's, it's not a huge world. I mean, it's getting bigger. I feel sometimes, but yeah. other times it's like, it's, it's, you know, compared to other genres, it's, you know, still pretty intimate. Yeah. And it's funny too, because this is uh, what we do. Like, it, 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 inevitably this will happen. Chris and I'll teach a class and see a whole bunch of people in the class. You know, we meet them, we'll talk to them and stuff. And then you walk through a dungeon and there they are topless or naked or whatever. <laughs> You're like, hey, how, how, how you doing? You know, nice to see you today in a different kind of way. Um, and that happens all the time, you know. So we we tend to see people in the kind of all different, in like Chris said, in, in, in a very intimate manner and get to know them very well in maybe mm-hmm. in not nor, nor ways you normally wouldn't. And then, you know, with writing erotica, you put kind of, and drawing erotica, drawing erotic images, you kind of put yourself in these things. So people realize they're seeing a little bit of you, your sexuality and your things mm-hmm. and getting maybe to lo- know you possibly. Cause we write stuff that's not, has nothing to do with our real sexuality. Um, so. Exactly. I like to say that it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, let's see. I know you from somewhere. Oh, yes. You were you know, strung up on a St. Andrew's cross. What's your name again? You know, it's just right, like, right. you know, I saw I, you yeah, being flogged with an inch of your life and your name. Right. Is, you know, and yeah, the, I, yeah. Right. You know, Didn't you, know, you have a saddle on you and, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and a ponytail <laughs> coming out of your butt, a butt, butt plug ponytail the last time I saw you, you know? And then it gets um, more complicated yeah, we, because like, like in the scene and erotica writing, people often have multiple names. So it oh, might yeah, be absolutely. like, you know, Ralph in public, Ralphie 65943 on FetLife. And right. It might be right. Lord Ralphie, you know, on someone else or Master Ralphie or something like right. that. Right. You know, so it's right. like it gets really confusing because people say, do you know this person? Well, it's like, what of the 12 names do you, you know, do you mean? <laughs> um, and the same thing yeah. with like, you know, with, with, with Veronica, because a lot of people use pseudonyms. You're one of the people actually who don't. I use a pseudonym. And yeah, so it's like, you know, so it's like trying to figure out the real name, the, the given name, you know, and their right, their pseudonym, if they have one, it gets pretty confusing. And then if, you, if they're a sub or they're a dom or if they're both, they're switched. So when they're a switch, they are something, something. Mm-hmm. When they're a dom, they're this, you know, you, you, it's varied. And then that's just names, Chris. You're not talking about uh, gender fluidity. Mm-hmm. Then it becomes exactly. a whole different thing. Oh, you know? exactly. So exactly. It's, it's it's not easy. It's hard to keep up sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. so. I'm giving I'm giving our producer the thumb up, and he's giving me a nod that he's in, he's getting our buddy on. 
Um, so we're going to have Jay on. I think Jay's in, is he still? In, I think he's just still in California. I think he's oh. in LA. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's still in LA. Now, is he, do you see that? Oh, here oh, we oh, go. Oh, I think he's here. Salutations. I'm here. Hi, there Jay. he is. Hi, Chris. Jay, wonderful. Wonderful. Let's, uh, let me just get a thumbs up from my producer to make sure you're, say hi. Hey, say hi, Jay. Hello. There he is. Hi, okay. Mark. <laughs> can you see us? I can see you. Okay. That, that, well, that, remember, Chris? I do. Man, we had one heck of a time with the uh, X-Biz show way back. Yeah, that was wonderful. I have to say that it's like when I when I heard about you being on the show, it's like I squealed like, oh, goody. You know, it's like Jay's going to be on. We get to catch up. That's wonderful. So you guys did an X-Biz show in L.A., Jay? Is that what you did? We did, and we did kind of the Hollywood tour thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we we went absolutely wild in the Hollywood costume shop on Hollywood Boulevard, oh, like kids in a candy that a store. <laughs> That's cool. And wow. we uh, in, we invaded the Thursday night Los Angeles science fiction and fantasy uh, meeting. Oh, cool! And uh, Christian got to bring his books and uh, uh, some. Oh shoot! We even did we even did dinner with the Lost uh, group afterwards. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah! Wow! Look at you guys! Look at you men of men about town! <laughs> boy, right. oh boy! Can't keep you! I can't leave you guys alone for a second. Um, <laughs> Jay, do us a favor before we get any further. Pronounce your last name right, because I'm not sure we're pronouncing it right. Moyes. Moyes. That's, Jay Moyes. There we go. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty obvious. So, Jay, um, tell us a little. Well, we know Chris and I know what you do and who you are, but uh, give us just a little bio, if you could, about yourself, so that the listeners can get an idea. Um, I've been doing kinky artwork for almost thirty years. Wow. Yeah, uh, I've been doing kinky artwork since I was in junior college. I started out as a kind of a vanilla redneck uh, from <laughs> Livermore, California. Okay. And uh, just, I didn't really, I mean, I was kind of feeling my way through trying to become a graphic designer, wanting to get into comics. Mm -hmm. And I met a professional dominatrix at a science fiction uh, Baycon. I oh, met okay. a professional dominatrix at Baycon up in the, the San Francisco Bay story. area. Mm -hmm. And she um, she kind of gave me a nudge here, there, and I kind of felt, you know, this is my niche. This is mm -hmm. where I really, really want to be. This is um, because I couldn't really feel comfortable up until that point, really. Uh, dating was just an absolute disaster for me. Mm -hmm. And part of it was I really felt like I'd been trying to be something I wasn't in I terms gotcha. of, you know, coming from that redneck background. Yeah. And it's like I was not an alpha male whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so I could just be who I was. And, and then, that was interesting. So yeah. so was it was it like this? I mean, not the second you met her, but all of a sudden as that as you have um an awakening of that, of the things that were in, inside you, you started to feel them coming out in your artwork. I mean, is it just it's maybe even be cliche in a way, but is that how it happened? Absolutely. Yeah. I had seen some kink stuff before and there's definitely, I mean, I can trace back some fetish roots to like Rishi Matsumoto, the Captain Harlock stuff. Okay. Right. Uh, some fashion stuff, but, um, Really, when when I met her um, and she introduced me to more people in the scene, mm -hmm. I had been doing like the, you know, pin up girls with guns, comic mm -hmm. girls, that sort of thing. Okay. And it kind of felt like what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. And I still hadn't really found that like place where I felt I fit in. Right. Um, and that. Uh, kink was, you know, I, I felt very comfortable working in kink, exploring kink in my artwork. Mm -hmm. Um, and I definitely liked at the time there was a feminist thing going on. Uh, the, the, the new age of feminism, uh, mm -hmm. going from the bra burning to the reclaiming sexual power and that sort of thing. People mm -hmm. like Annie Sprinkle, right. Susie Bright, 
And that was something I could get behind too. Femdom was kind of a way to um, kind of embrace female empowerment. And I felt I could get behind that and I could get behind that in my artwork. Hmm. So, Chris, you've seen Jay's work, of course, mm-hmm. you know, and you're, you're aware of it. I oh, mean, it's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful, yeah. Jay. You're, yeah, you're, it's pretty you know, cool. I, absolutely. So, Jay, what, what would you – do you have a style, would you say? I mean, what what – because I don't I, – I'm not – you know, I really don't know how to define – what I like in art and what it is to tell you the truth. I just see it and I like it, you know, but do you, do you have a style, a specific way you'd say, well, I'm this kind of an artist or I'm this kind of an artist beyond, beyond just a fetish artist. I'm talking about the actual, um, the actual style of the drawing or the illustration. If, if I had to put it towards a lay person, mm-hmm. I would say Americanized anime. Okay. Well, yeah, I, can I can see that. that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, I I call myself fetish artist for a reason. Mm-hmm. I I embrace fetish. That that's part of what's in the work itself. Yeah. But if someone had to say, well, okay, we we get it, but what would you say your style is? Um, huge huge influence from eighties uh, comic books and anime. Okay. Uh, Riji Matsumoto, who did Captain Harlock mm-hmm, and Star right. Blazers. Robotech, um, the oh, I uh, can't forget Matsume Shiro. Oh yeah, who would later go to do Ghost in the Shell? But I, I consumed oh, almost yeah, I was consuming almost anything of like Appleseed and Dominion. Once oh, again, cool. back to that leather, you know, Dominion. Yeah, the the you know, two of the two of the villains are look like cat dominatrixes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Puma sisters, absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I had a pinup of uh, the Puma Sisters uh, on on my on my studio apartment when I was going to junior college. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask a dumb question because this comes up in my head, and I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. First of all, I want everybody to know that they're listening to uh, Licking on Vanilla, and uh, we're talking to Jay Moist today. He's a uh, uh, finished illustrator, and when we get done with talking to Jay, and we have we have this episode up i will you know i will blog plenty on where to go find his stuff we'll talk about that later too but the question i have jay um what what is the seeming connection between sci-fi and fetish because there definitely seems to be one okay this is where i have to warn the young people because this this drill bit goes deep deep <laughs> no, I, deep into the don't worry about it. <laughs> chris and i chris and i were talking about thunderbirds at the beginning of the show so exactly don't worry about that. <laughs> this goes deeper than that when you okay. really um especially here in los angeles right. uh, now different locations have different histories of kink san francisco is a really great example on that we were just talking about that right yeah, chris? exactly yeah, we're just absolutely. saying how the difference between la and like san francisco yeah absolutely but when you when you look at Los Angeles itself, and this was an eye opener coming from the Bay Area into Los Angeles, the thing is, is the L.A. sci-fi scene itself, um, just like San Francisco has its crossing cultures, mm-hmm. Los Angeles would have its own crossing cultures of the occult, the Hollywood scene. The sci-fi writers scene, because you've got to remember, some of the big names in sci-fi started here in L.A. Mm-hmm. And so the thing is, you've got uh, counterculture, you've got these new mystical, experimental, uh, occult type things going on. Mm-hmm. And you've got this level. I mean, if we went back to like 1960 and started talking about professional dominatrixes mm-hmm. and uh, LGBTQ, and they'd kind of like look at us and go, what exactly are you talking about here? Mm-hmm. But there was a... But due to the nature of the experimenting going on and the sexual revolution, you you had a lot of people that were just crossing over, experimenting. And with sci-fi, you're opening your mind to all new weird and right. wacky things. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, like Heinlein is a really, really great example of this. You've got someone that was raised in conservative America 
and he's coming up with these ideas. You know, he's, he's writing about these ideas about free love, mm-hmm. um, polyamory, and with that comes some of the early experiments. You know, uh, Gore. Uh, G O R mm-hmm. mm-hmm, is right. a really great example of this. I have to admit, I have not deeply dived into that po- that pool. Mm-hmm. But the the thing is, is that you know these there's very very fertile ground of mm-hmm. you know and and where people might think this is completely innocent, um, but yeah the you know the the fashions of the time, these space suits. Skin tight suits, yeah. um, right. uh, metallics, uh, shiny patent leather stuff. Right. No kidding. Yeah. Um, you know, the, you look at the covers. You look at what's hinted at. You mm-hmm. you look at in some cases the actual text. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a lot of fertile ground for kink in this. I totally agree. No, I totally. Agree. I mean. I think, well, like you're saying, you know, just look at, look at Emma Peel. You know, we can mm-hmm. go back to it's a lot of places to go to, you know, where we can we could say that the intersection of of fetish or just the idea of fetish or a hint of it, smell of it comes mm-hmm. in, you know, for sure. Oh yeah, Jay, and, and science fiction has go a ahead, long Chris. history of like this this we, this kind of sexual side of it. I mean, like uh, you know, a lot of uh, SF writers, you know, earn their living also writing porn under different names. That's true. Uh, Bill true. Rotzler, who was a science fiction uh, author and also an illustrator, a cartoonist, also made adult films. <laughs> mm-hmm. And right. he was actually friends was one with of people, the first. You know, exactly. Yeah, one of the first, yeah. Exactly. And his ashes are actually at Los Um And the same way, it's like Bijou Trimble was a friend of him. And then Tim Powers, the famous fantasy writer, actually helped out you know, with the sets <laughs> on one of yeah, Rotzler's right. films. It was a weird little mix of you know, sex, porn, kink, and science fiction. I think someone's got to write a book about one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, so, so just let's get slightly off topic because I do want to push uh, what you're doing, Jay. Where, 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 with the, with the, with the lockdown, did that change the way you were doing business or what was happening or what was in your head for the things you felt like you had to get out in the get last ground. year? It ground zero to it. it just okay. it just basically just blew it. Uh, you know, it hit it like a tornado and just leveled yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, right before the pandemic, I had been working on some new painting stuff uh, for Erotic City and um, Erotic City and Layer at AVN. I had just come out of Layer okay. at AVN with Mister mm-hmm. Cyan for the uh, AVN show in Vegas. Okay, probably some of the most fun I had ever had mm-hmm. doing the avn show because uh, we did the the uh, the snm uh vendor area on the mezzanine and mm-hmm. then did uh a number of parties and such with the show uh it was one of my first times crossing um and dressing at the event uh oh, showed cool. up in a zentai suit road <laughs> corset high heels oh, oh it was so That's much wonderful. fun fantastic fantastic and, um, yeah, I'm coming out of that, coming into February, working right. on some commissions, doing some painting, and then, like, just as the hint of the lockdown is starting, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I've got a little more time to work with, things are getting a little quiet, mm-hmm. and then the nature, uh, the thing is, I got hit from two two or more directions. Okay. Um, by day, um, I've got a gig where I'm helping out the disabled, uh, taking them to places like dialysis and that sort of Mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Um, so as we're going into lockdown, I'm still having to go out. I got you. And this is before masks are even becoming a thing. So it's like every day I'm looking over my shoulder. Right. And then as we start progressing from spring into summer, that's when Sherry's cancer started kicking in. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know what was really going down at the time. So part of the problem was Sherry was refusing to get treatment. Okay. And she didn't even know she, she didn't even know this was can't, well, she had had cancer, Mm -hmm. 
but she didn't know that the cancer was causing what she was going through. Her back was Ooh. in severe pain to the point where she could not uh, she could not get up. Mm-hmm. So as we're coming into May and June, she can she can barely make it to the bathroom. Oh. Oof, man. And so between juggling the driving job, dealing with things at home, um, and we're begging and pleading with Sherry to see a doctor, to try and do some kind of care. Um, And it's like, nope, nope, nope. And let's just say that ends poorly in 2020. I got you. I got you. But it, it was just like, I mean, I could try and sketch a little here or do a little yeah. something there. Right. But it just wasn't, I mean, like, uh, it really, nothing nothing good was coming out of it. It was just, yeah. I, I had knocked out some pieces by April and bang, that was it. It's like this black hole um, until we start going into 2021. Yeah, it's weird because Chris and I were talking about this and, you know, since we all kind of work the work we do, I'm not talking about the work you do when you had a, you were uh, carting people to, to their appointments, but I'm talking about the, you know, the artwork and the writing we do, we do, we do solo. We don't really have anybody around us at the time. So we, we don't need to go to an office and all that kind of stuff. So the lockdown, being locked down doesn't affect us in that way, but you know, the overall feeling of what happened and the fact, and I keep saying there's nothing good has come out of this at all. And, um, it, it just really, really knocked a lot of people, even people who work from home back in our heels. We just, we just didn't, it's like nothing I've ever, I've ever experienced before. And, uh, Chris was saying before too, the socialization of, you know, not being able to go out and grab a bite to eat with a buddy is really like you wouldn't, wouldn't think about it. It's really difficult. It's really, really off-putting and difficult, you know. Oh, well, for and sure. And that's one of the funny, th- yeah. Uh, one of the funny things about what I do is, yes, I will do artwork at home, and I've known a number of artists, both that are in the fetish and comics and this, that, and the other. Their studio is at home, right? In my case, part of the influence of what I do, even if a lot of times I'm not even drawing what's going on around me. But I have relied on the club scene yeah, to be kind of the mm. generator for what I do. That you makes look sense. at a lot of the, I mean, the dominatrix calendars that I was doing in the 90s, as simple as they are, in part one of the reasons, you know, I never really mentioned this in, in, in my blog and such, mm. but the a lot of these were done by bar light. You know, someone oh, yeah, would go, okay. you know, wh- why are these so simple? Why are these so crude, so to speak? And the thing is, I'm doing this by bar light with a rapidograph. And mm-hmm. I'm at like Bondage Go Go in San Francisco, or uh, I'm in some nightclubs or strip clubs, mm-hmm. or I'm at a play party where everyone's like bringing, you know, everything's dark for the mood lighting. Yeah. And that continues into what I'm doing here where like you know i've done a lot of artwork over at sanctuary um mm-hmm. layered layer de sod um uh, you know fetish balls fetish parties mm-hmm. and i i even have a little clip on light that i will put over my artwork to where i can actually see closer what i'm doing when i'm doing some of this stuff and that energy of the kinky play, the bondage, the flogging, the uh, the the music, that's part of what drives the artwork. And I do admit, in hindsight, part of that was part of that was what was stifled what stifled the artwork in twenty twenty. Very They're just, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of it was like, what was the point? No, They're makes just, sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, and that's, but and that's the thing too. It's like, you know, it's like so many creative people during this, this time have been beating themselves up for not using this to the advantage, but there's so many psychological, you know, you know, you know, difficulties and challenges with this whole situation. So yeah, you, you, you think it's going to be like this creative groundswell because you're, be, you know, you're stuck at home and, you know, but again, it's like, there's, you know, all of us and you're a, a great example at Jay. So you need, you know, this, the stimulus from being out and about and being with other people. And that's can affect, you know, your productivity and your creativity. And 
you know, I know I felt, and I'm sure Ralph has too, and I've talked to many creative people, and no, no matter what they're interested in, who's saying the same thing, that's like, yes, I'm still working, but it's not as much as, you know, what I used to be able to do pre-pandemic. <laughs> David Lynch was saying something about, he feels that the notion that you have to suffer to be creative mm-hmm. is a myth. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's, yeah, I agree. there's something to be said about joy uh, yeah. being an energetic source. Absolutely. And in terms of fetish, one of the problems I've had sometimes is when people try to make fetish a little too real, mm-hmm. especially in the especially in our entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the thing or or this there's the, the mainstream of main, mainstreaming of fetish too. Yeah. The the thing is is that in many ways um I I like the analogy of the floating world, which has been brought up by Midori and a number of others. Right. That this is my escape. This is, Mm -hmm. you know, this this is not so much my reality. This is how I get away from reality. Mm -hmm. And that might have actually been part of it too, where it just kind of felt like I couldn't even get through the door to get to my escape. It was like that makes a lot of sense. Um, the this was uh this has been how i've dealt with the real world sometimes is Mm -hmm. to just kind of step out of this go into fetish um and this is this is the uh reality level that i can jump to to not have to deal with politics fights wars disease Right. Um, this is this is essentially art has essentially been how I keep from being a crumpled mass on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's true for I would agree. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So so let's let's wrap this up. Tell us what's going on right now. What you're getting into, like you know, right now or maybe maybe within the next month or so. Like, do you have anything you know, the, 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 something on the on the burner that we can the, tell people about? Well, uh, the big hurdle I have right now is getting things in order at home. Home is turned into a giant Tetris game and I'm not going <laughs> to, that's obviously what you don't want to talk about. No, but right. um, what I can say is I'm seeing doors open Good. and Good. I'm seeing uh, new things come up. One of the Good. things I want to do. Um, the funny thing is uh, I've wanted to redo the artwork at home. So mm-hmm. I've wanted to do a, like a series of boot paintings and shoe paintings. Ooh, okay. That's cool. Much like um, there's an artist named Hudson Marquez mm-hmm. and I highly recommend Hudson. He is a very, um, his artwork is very crude, but it's very energetic. Lots mm-hmm. of high heeled shoes, uh, lots of foot worship, uh, he's very much an old school blues guy uh-huh. and Cadillacs. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, and I, 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 he did a series of just like four foot tall shoes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, there's a, there's something in me he- in my head going, hold my beer, <laughs> <laughs> and cool. so. I'm very seriously thinking of pitching to Matt uh, over at Gallery 30 South. Hey, if I can do a series of my own take of fetish shoes, futuristic boots, and that sort of thing, Mm -hmm. can we move this? Can we sell this? And so that's one one direction. I'm working on a calendar for 2022. Right. We we I remember you and I talked about well in the interview in the print interview we talked about that. Great. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to do that as all original artwork, uh, but it's like the there's going to be archived stuff, so we're going to okay. have some stuff from 2019, 2018, but it'll be a lot of the color work that I've done, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that people might not have been able to get, like something they can hang on their wall. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And because this is going to be through Cafe Press, it is slightly safe for work. <laughs> okay, cool. That's cool. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we say all the time. Is it, can we open this website? Is it safe for work? You know, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, because well, there's a lot of stuff I do that's not. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know, but it's wonderful all the same. Um, well, I mean, I, what we're going to do is we're we're going to get up the links of where to find you. 
But mm-hmm. if you want to tell us, say it out loud, where we can find where people can find your stuff, please do right now. Give us give us the address, the URL. Fetish for uh, sorry, fetishartist.net. Okay. And merch is available right now at fetishforlife.com. Both of these URLs, fetishartist.net and fetishforlife.com, forward to my site. Oh, cool. Okay. So uh, fetishartist.net goes to my art blog, all the stuff in progress, the new things that are going on, and Fetish for Life goes straight to the merchandise site. Cool. So you can get like coffee mugs, t-shirts, mm-hmm. greeting cards, uh, uh, a wall clock with a really, really Ooh. killer high heel shoe. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, the J, the J swag. <laughs> exactly. It's good, good J swag. I got you. Exactly. Well, Jay, I, I don't know how much, it, how we can even thank you. This has been yes, really absolutely. eye and, uh, and it's so wonderful to reconnect a, again. We got, we'll, we'll definitely, when the pandemic starts to ease up, I can see a trip down south to hang out again in the future for sure. That and we're looking fun. brighter down here. It needs to be said, we're we're at about 40% vaccinated right now and growing. Mm-hmm. Good, and good. so a lot of things are opening up. Sanctuary's first play party is going to be this weekend. Oh, very it's cool. vaccination good. only. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you've had your shots, and there's no excuse not to at this point. Mm-hmm. There really isn't. Um you know, it's like if you if you've had your shots, you're 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 two weeks into your vaccinations. Um it's time to party. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. cool. Well, you heard it from Jay. Jay, <laughs> thanks so much, man. Uh, we had a great talk with you. That Absolutely. was uh, Jay Moyes. Absolutely. And Jay, uh, we're, we're going to give all the information on the blog when we run the episode. Jay, I'll let you know when that happens. Thank you, Jay. You be well, okay? Stay well and stay creative. You too. You too. Have a great one, guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye, Jay. Bye-bye. So once again, Chris, we get through another uh, licking non vanilla with uh, you know another great guest. What can that I tell was you? wonderful. Jay is wonderful. such a sweetheart, and definitely he's people nice got to check his work out. He's a great artist and a great person. He is, and, and he's got a really good, yeah. interesting perspective on things, mm-hmm. you know, um, and more articulate than we are in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> Me no talk uh, well. Um. <laughs> we no don't talk good. Um, well, you've wasted another hour here, <laughs> not vanilla. What are you people doing um, with your lives? Jeez. Yeah, what are you doing? Come, Come on, on, get, on, get, get your off, act right? together. Get off, the, Jeez. Get, off, get off the internet and go, go clean a closet or something. Yes, and um, listen around listening to a pair of old farts talk about porn. I mean, jeez. That's right. <laughs> when, when's when the world going to get back to normal? Um, this has been Licking Not Vanilla with one of your hosts. I'm Ralph Greco <laughs> Jr. And across from me is... Uh, Chris, a.k.a. M. Christian. And uh, we, we want to thank you for listening. We want to thank Jay for coming on today. And we'll have more for you. We're, you know, we're, we're chugging along, getting some more episodes up, and we'll let you know when that happens. And uh, we'll see you next time. So goodbye, everybody. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. Be well. <laughs> Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> and visit us on the web at www.lickingnonvanilla.com.